Phantom 3 Advanced. And just like everybody else, I, of course, was eagerly looking forward to opening the box and seeing what's inside. And yes, I know, everybody else has done this before, but I just wanted to do mine, too, so I can look back and remember it. Plus, uh, there's many friends and family who may uh, want to enjoy this with me, so uh, please don't fault me for doing my own unboxing, even though it's been done before. So anyway, I'll open the box. Um, you know, there's the manual, and it's got some sort of seal that was already sort of open, but uh, not all the way, as you could see there. Um, so it has a, a bunch of little short manuals and some stickers. Now, keep in mind, the real manual you get online is much more comprehensive, and I strongly suggest uh, getting th that as a reference. Uh, the manuals in here are very brief and they're okay to read on the toilet and whatnot, but uh, uh, they certainly don't have the comprehensive information that you'll get on the PDF. If you go to the DJI website, uh, they have just fabulous down, you know, from video tutorials that I watched several times <laughs> uh, to uh, the manuals and firmware and so forth. So anyway, pop in the carton off there. Uh, there is the drone and they put stickers on each motor. One of the stickers was off on one of the motors. So I imagine this guy's been out for a while and been handled rather heavily, which was a little bit worrisome uh, at first to me. But um, these little stickers have like disclaimers on them and so forth. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody reads it. Now, that right there is a plastic uh, for the gimbal and camera, but mine was off uh, for some reason. Uh, you know, obviously I was a little bit concerned by that, uh, you know, but it didn't seem like there was any damage. Uh, the plastic was still on the lens. So uh, I continued on with my uh, unboxing. I did notice, uh, well, I guess I'm going to continue to look at the gimbal to make sure there's no damage. So uh, also I noticed there's uh, some the stickers that indicate the front of the aircraft. Uh, my stickers were loose. I don't, you know, humidity or whatever would make those uh, come off like that, I, d I don't know. I mean, it's a very well engineered craft. You'd think the stickers would be on uh, pretty good, but uh, those stickers were off. I, I plan on looking at that in the future, perhaps changing the stickers. They do give you some stickers, so uh, I'm not really worried about it, but uh, that was odd. Uh, so, the other stuff in the box, uh, I believe this is going to be the charger. Uh, which is not as simple as one might expect. Uh, you know, it's not just a, you know, just plug it in. It actually has two outlets. Well, it's, it's two parts. You know, it has a little cord that plugs in uh, to that little box. Actually, it's three parts, I guess. It's, it's, uh, well, no, I'm not really sure what that box. Anyway, so the, the, the plug in the cords in is pretty self-explanatory. That's easy. But the plug that goes into the battery, I'll show it to you later, uh, is, is it has like a little protective uh, cap on it, which is really interesting. And it's not, it's clever. It's not cheap and it's a very well engineered, but um, you know, it's, I haven't seen it before. So I was like looking at it like, what, what in the world is that? Uh, Anyway, so here is the uh, remote controller, and they put some plastic cover on there that was virtually impossible to take off. Uh, I uh, would suggest getting breaking your scissors out. Don't even goof with it. Just start cutting with the scissors. Um, me, I was sitting there, ah, it's got to just come off, so I fiddled with it way too long. I certainly hope I don't have... Oh, good. If I sat there and recorded me fiddling with that... It was really annoying. Ooh. So anyway, I got it off. 
I should have put it in there. You would have, you, everybody would be laughing. Okay, so that's the uh, cell phone and tablet holder, which uh, you know you got to fiddle with. Like the cell phones, you're going to want to pull these little tabs down in the middle. The tablets, you'll keep those tabs up. But it, it's actually again well engineered. Uh, you know, uh, you'll see. The the entire remote is is a very solid, well engineered device. It's, it's not chintzy at all. Uh, they did a nice job, these guys. Uh, so uh, there's the bag with, uh, I already know, the propellers are in there. They give you two sets, and I'll go over those propellers later. That's the, they put some wrapping on there, which is uh, rather annoying <laughs> to get off. Uh, this is just, like a, I think, extra gimbal. Um, the mounts, the, the things in case it crashes and the gimbal falls off. You know, it's just extra stuff. I, I just put that aside. So uh, now you know you might want to. You, you surprisingly, it takes a little while to figure out how to put that protector on there, uh, that little plastic protector. And you're going to want to keep this so that when you're bringing it to the park or whatever, your gimbal's not flying around. Uh, but it, it isn't exactly easy. I mean, you know, it's not kindergarten stuff where you put that hole. <laughs> it's uh, you know you see if you can just figure out how to put it on without you know using a reference <laughs> because that, I uh, I actually had to you know look at the picture in the in the uh, diagram and you know to figure out how to get that guy on there but um, also later I'm gonna go over it but there's like this little kind of styrofoam or plastic piece at the back of the gimbal I don't know if you can see it in my video here but you got you got to take that off. They they have a little sticker on there that says don't forget to take it off. <laughs> uh, on the battery, um, it's not real easy to get out. Like you got to you know put some apply some pressure to it, uh, you know, to get that thing out. So you got to pinch it good and pull it. It was uh, so in there pretty good, and I imagine it needs to be. <laughs> that would suck if that thing fell out while you were flying around. Yeah, that would suck real bad, especially if you're over water. Or, well, anything, you know, your drone simply falling out of the sky would suck. So here's that little plug I was talking about, Neato, right? So it's got a little cap or cover on it, on the prongs, a protective cover. And you just open that up, and then it slides into the prongs on the battery. Very clever for these guys. And then you just plug it in. Uh, just like that, it worked out pretty well. I'm plugging in no power supply, and uh, <clears throat> you know, mine didn't light up right away. I know, I think if I just waited, it would have lit up, but I fiddled with it. If you just press it once quickly, it uh, turns the display on for the battery. Uh, just so you know, powering the aircraft on, you push it once, the same button, and then push it again and hold, and it powers the aircraft on. But if you just push it once, it gives you a display, and that, there is the battery charging right there. So it's, it's actually like around 30 or 40 percent according to that. Uh, now the next thing you charge, and by the way, I didn't charge both of these. I've heard rumors it's not a good idea, so I charged the the aircraft battery and then I plugged in the remote battery afterwards okay so then I went to do the upgrade on the firmware for the aircraft and I followed DJI's instructions um, and plugged it in um, to my well, I downloaded the bin file from DJI with the latest firmware uh, and I had it on my computer, and then I plugged it in to the computer, you know, the aircraft into the computer like I'm showing you here. <coughs> so, and then I turned the aircraft on, and the computer detected it, you know, it was just like anything else. You know, it came up as like a, another drive. So, then I copied the bin file to the aircraft and uh, I did this a couple of times and it failed to upgrade the firmware you know it made some weird sounds you know this and that 
so um, I, I I wasn't able to get it working. Huh? So I, I took the SD card out, and and this is what I think everybody should do. But you know whatever, I, I put it in an adapter I have for the uh, the little micro SD card. You see there. Uh, it's stuck on my phone. Okay, so I put the SD card in this adapter, and these things are a dime a dozen. Like, you, they should be everywhere. Go get them at the dollar store or something. And I formatted it, the SD card. Then I put the bin on the SD card, and it was the only thing on there at this point. Okay? So then I put the SD card in the aircraft without it being on, and I booted the aircraft. And then the firmware uh, it took first try, doing it that way. And so I, I don't know why they want you to do it the other way. It is what it is. Also, I don't know. Maybe it failed because I, I left that stupid little styrofoam thing on and it didn't let the gimbal fiddle around. So don't feel to take that off. That was dumb. I don't know how I didn't notice that. Also, uh, while it's upgrading, the... Um, it flashes, uh, the gimbal light flashes green and red. Uh, once it's solid green, you've succeeded. So, all right, so then after, what am I doing here? I should cut that out. Uh, after I upgraded the firmware on the aircraft, make sure the aircraft's off and upgrade the firmware on your remote. Now, the reason you're seeing it almost completed here is I did it with an iPhone and I didn't have any success. It, the iPhone wouldn't register. It kept on saying the internet wasn't working and I got tired of it and went with my Android phone. And then I didn't have any success. So make sure the aircraft's off and plug your phone in and then go through that stuff there to upgrade the firmware of the remote. You know, turn the remote on. And, you know, you'll see all the options and everything. And after you upgrade the firmware on the remote, then you break out your, uh, then you turn the aircraft on. Uh, you know, after the firmware of the remote is done. Turn the aircraft on. And, um, and, and you can then go through the stuff on the screen for, you know, uh, like s your settings to change to 2.7K versus 1080p. Uh, you can calibrate the compass, which I'm doing right here. By the way, uh, so you, when you calibrate the compass the first way, you do it uh, counterclockwise like I just did. Ay, ay, ay. Um, so then you do the, the rest of the, the uh, c calibration like I'm showing you here. Well, I don't know. Anyway, I, I was successful in calibrating it. I'm not sure if I was supposed to spin it that way. It tells you on the screen, though, and there's smarter people out there than me that will look at the screen and probably get it the first time. <laughs> I, I did it quick. It wasn't exactly hard. Uh, and you'll see. Just follow the instructions. I mean, I could have, I guess, took more video of all that, you know. But I had everybody harassing me. <laughs> so anyway, um, so the propellers, you know, it's all self-explanatory. They put this plastic crap on the threads, so just make sure you move that. And spin the propellers the opposite direction that the arrows show on the aircraft, not the same direction. And then there's some arrows f for unlocking and locking that show you the direction for tightening on the uh, uh, on the actual um, propeller. So the the bottom line is, you know, put the black propellers on the uh, black engines. They have little black markings or or silver markings and then um, and spin them in the direction indicated on the propellers for what you want to do not on the the indicators on the aircraft are telling you the direction that the propellers will spin so you're gonna like 
tighten them the opposite direction. And you don't need to crank it down, by the way. There's self-tightening, meaning they spin the opposite direction. So when the, the, they spin up, they're going to, you know, tighten themselves. Um, anyway, you know, it's not too difficult. And if there's damage on the propellers, I've read, you know, it's real important to put a better, a good propeller on there because they go out of balance. So if you crash or hit a tree and it's all scraped up, uh, you know, and if you use your second set of propellers, you're going to have to break out the cash because my understanding is these guys aren't cheap. Not cheap at all. I don't know why I'm showing you guys putting on all four propellers on board watching it. I imagine you guys, if I'm bored watching my own video, you guys are probably drooling on your keyboard. Almost done. Almost done. Come on. It took me an hour to peel that plastic off. Ugh. So it's time to fly. So everything's on. Face it away from you. And then to turn the engines on, you just pull the sticks down and in the middle. And it turned them right on. Vroom. It doesn't fly anywhere. So you can see in the lower corner, it turned them right on. It won't go anywhere until you push the left uh, stick up. And don't do it like a crazy person. <laughs> just take it easy easy and uh, there I go taking off for the first time yeah how cool is that god that thing is neat uh, so the left stick if you turn it left and right it just simply rotates it they call that the yaw it rotates it. So that's actually how you turn it left and right. It's with the left stick. And that makes it go up and down the left stick. So I know most people probably watching this know this already. What am I looking at? Oh, there we go. I'm still fiddling around with things. So I was fiddling with up and down. I'm thinking, geez, I hope I don't run into those trees and... Yeah, you should be doing this in the middle of a park where there's a lot of room, but I'm too antsy. I wanted to go out there and get busy and see what's going on. Oh, I had to lock uh, one of my dogs up, the crazy pit dog, because she, A, would have tried to kill the drone. And B, my understanding is the sonar on the drone, uh, it adversely affects the dogs, so you probably don't want them, you know, to be goofing around. Plus, she attacks all my stuff, and I'm not sure she would win that fight. The props would probably ruin her day, but I don't know. Oh, here I go. I'm brave. Look at me. Look at me. I just went between two trees. <laughs> yeah, and did not crash. Now I'm going to go over water on my first flight. Yes, genius. Oh my god, please don't crash in the water. <laughs> I was looking for alligators. I can't believe it. Man, let me tell you, I had the, the, uh, the sphincter shrivel factor right here when I was flying this thing over the water. I gotta tell you, it was scary business. I mean, I know there's experienced guys out there that had no problems. <laughs> They're like laughing at me. But uh, I cannot afford to lose something like this so <laughs> I, mean, I, I really just want to leave it right in my yard and look at it let alone flying it over to the daggum lake and looking at it eagerly like that lake wants it oh the drone killer lake so I'm bringing it back and I'm like okay let's see can I get it between these trees without crashing I'm fiddling around, looking at everything. It's very exciting. Very exciting. I, want to, I think I'm going to get brave here. Oh, and you see the red LED lights? They show uh, the front of the aircraft, which is important to know. Because if you push forward on the right stick, it moves uh, to, you know, to the front it moves forward, so you want to know which way your aircraft's facing before you hit the the right stick forward. By the way, if you hit 
the right stick backwards, it goes backwards. If you hit the right stick to the right and left, it actually banks to the right and banks to the left. You can do your full steering with just the right stick. Uh, the height or uh, altitude with your left stick. And, of course, like I said, the yaw with the left stick. Uh, I'm going back out over the lake. I mean, these things are so, you know, cool. I mean, I probably could cross the lake on it. Do I have the cojones for such a thing uh, to go across the lake? No. I do not. <laughs> I might try it one day, but, oh, you know me. It, it, you know I'm going to have an engine failure and things are going to get dumped right in there and I'll be crying in real life. So, yeah, maybe I won't do that. What's the, you know, which would be cool, especially if there's something like some kind of alligator or maybe a megalodon in the middle of the lake. Could happen, megalodon. Okay, so now it's like I'm going to get adventurous and go towards the setting sun, maybe. No, I'm just checking everything out. I, I am sitting here looking, uh, you know, just watching it, but, uh, you know, just checking the yaw out. So it just turns, just being patient. I know this is boring for most folks, except perhaps my mom. No, she'd be bored too. Now my wife, I should just make her watch this. It's torture. It looks like I'm coming close to the tree there, but I'm not. I promise. Okay, here I go. I'm going far. Oh my god, it's almost out of sight. It's, oh my goodness, can you believe how far I, <laughs> my first flight? I'm like, oh. I don't want to go too far. You can still see it. It's still there. All right, come back, come back to me, please. Come back. I don't know what I did. At some point, I lost um, connection to it. And I thought the return to home was going to... Uh, yeah, it actually went on, and I don't know. I gotta read some more about that. But it, it, I still had a connection to the craft. Um. Oh, and the little boys are gonna. Oh yeah, that's right. I've practiced my filming of little goblins jumping on the trampoline. <laughs> So, anyway, enough of that. Uh, this thing is going to wind down. I seriously doubt anybody has listened to this this far, which is just fine. What a pretty sunset. The little goblins play on the trampoline in the sunset. Perfect weather. How many days like that do you have on your memory? But, um, yeah, I mean, i got to get it to the, the Chinese. You know, we always goofed on them that they made maybe cheap products or whatnot like that but I, I don't know if we make anything comparable to this that drone this this thing is really well made I've been seeing some pretty darn good products from the Chinese and uh, as an American uh, who'd like to think we're competitive um, we got to get busy I'm mean, making stuff like this I mean, this thing is not no joke. It's worth the money. <laughs> it really is. It's it's a clever device. And if what are they gonna? What if they expand upon it? What if they make make them big enough that they carry people? Like one or two people can go in a quadcopter. I mean, the thing is so steady and you know, reasonably safe. I know everybody knee jerk reaction. Yeah, oh, everybody's gonna be crashing. Yeah, they, me, 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 me. You know, well, that's what they thought when they made cars. You know, I mean, it's it's got to be the future. We're gonna run out of room driving around. They're gonna make quadcopters. People are gonna be flying around. You know, collision avoidance and all that. It's gonna happen. And these guys, they might be the ones pioneering it. That's a crazy thought, but what? What's going to happen when all the Chinese are over there flying to work instead of having to get stuck in traffic like we do all day? How nice would that be? Be able to hop in your quadcopter and just take off and go to wherever you want to go. 
I mean, um, commutes, productivity would go way up. Plus, it would be a huge industry. I mean, look at the automotive industry was huge for so long. And uh, suddenly, this thing will start taking off. Uh, I, I see it happening. I know some of you are maybe goofing on me about it, but uh, I don't know. It could happen. So the boys were asking me to land it in the trampoline. Yeah, that would be just genius. All right, so anyways, winding down here, and I...